this point. I have, point. yep. What do you see on, about them on the film? Uh, they're, for, to start, they're a well-coached offense. Uh, they're a physical offense. I think Coach Kill's done a great job with that program. Watching that program develop over the last, I think, four years that he's been there, he's done an outstanding job. He's got an offensive line that's physical. He's got backs that run hard. Uh, got a, several tight ends that do a great job of blocking at the point of attack, and they've got a nice scheme uh, to keep you guessing with some misdirection and some downhill power stuff. So a lot of challenges as we go uh, forward and face Minnesota. Leading, well, well, one of the leading teams in the nation in terms of yards per completion. Is that a result of the effectiveness of play action, or is there something else at play there? Well, yeah, they do such a good job of uh, running the football right now that you've got to devote more defenders to stop in the run. And it isolates your, your defensive backs in one-on-one -on -one situations, and they've done a great job of exploiting that. They've taken deep shots in certain personnel groupings over the top, and they've connected with them. And um, you know, obviously that uh, increases your average per completion uh, when you're able to do that. So they've done a good job with that to complement the run game. Front row right, Tim. Yeah, Tim Mike Columbus Dispatch. Chris, when you look at Cobb, their, their running back, what stands out about him? He seems to be one of the more uh, you know, spectacular runners in the country right now. What just jumps out to you to him? Well, it starts with their offensive line. They're doing a great job of blocking up front for him, and then he's a hard runner. When he gets that ball, he's a downhill runner. They run in a, a nice A-gap power, and they're not looking to bounce it. He's looking to run downhill, and he's a hard runner, and he gets the yards. Uh, he keeps his legs driving all the time. So, I mean, he's he's a load. He's a challenge, and he fits well with their scheme. You know, another thing, uh, Saturday night, like Urban talked about this a little while ago, maybe y'all didn't relax maybe, but you got a little bit more of a prevent kind of situation or whatever it went on. What are the things y'all learned from that fourth quarter you think will help you? Uh, well, anytime you get into that situation, the thing that you continually try to stress to your team is you got to finish, especially when you're, you're facing a good opponent. Um, I thought we had played an okay game uh, through the first three quarters and started off a little slow, settled down the second and third quarter and played decent, really until about the 12-minute uh, mark of the fourth quarter when we were up 42-24. Uh, we gave up two touchdowns there in the last 12 minutes, and they weren't pretty either. Uh, really disappointed with how we finished that game. And that's something that we've got to continue to build on. It, it's happened a little bit to us before in the previous games but more with some of the backups and we put them in we weren't able to finish games the way we wanted to come out on a positive note and we have to learn to do that I mean we were I think we you know we got kind of comfortable uh, on defense because we were up 42 24 12 minutes to go uh, we had a couple takeaway opportunities in, in one of those drives that if we would have maybe gotten a fumble or an interception that uh, we had an opportunity to get it might have changed things but bottom line is we didn't finish the game uh, the way we wanted to and very disappointed and upset about that Eli Apple I don't think he started the game. He was on the stationary bike, and, but uh, he came in. It actually seemed to lift the defense. Yeah. What, what do you see about him that's different from five or six weeks ago? Do you see a confidence? What do you see about Eli? Well, I see a kid that continues to mature. Uh, his confidence continues to grow. Uh, Saturday night was a great challenge for Eli. It was a great opportunity to see how uh, for us to see how he was going to respond. He did not practice at all last week. Uh, did not take one rep at practice. And leading up to the game, even on Saturday morning, we weren't sure if Eli was going to be able to play or not. So we, we made the decision to start uh, Gary on Conley. Uh, went through the first couple uh, drives there. Uh, it, we just got to a point we said, Eli, you got to go. And Eli said, I'm ready. So we went in there and he played and uh, didn't play uh, his best football at the end of the game. Uh, gave up a touchdown in the fourth quarter. Uh, that was disappointing, but throughout the course of the game, from when he went in to, to that point, he made some plays both in the run game and in the pass game. Great opportunity for us to show, or for Eli to show us where he's where he's come from, and uh, excited about his future because of that. I mean, showed some uh, some grit, some determination, some gut, some toughness that, that honestly we didn't know Eli had. Fourth down play. I mean, we're absolutely, that. absolutely. They'd run that same play on us earlier in the game. They got called called for holding. Um, you know, Eli was okay the first time. Tyvis Powell uh, wasn't quite where he needed to be. We got it fixed on the sideline. They came back and did it on a fourth down. We fit it the, uh, the right way, and Eli was at the point, set in the edge, and, and actually made a great play. But uh, Eli showed a, a lot of character in that game, again, because he hadn't practiced all week. And there were some things that he could have done better. We'd like to, uh, to have him do better in the game, but a lot of it had to, to be contributed to just a lack of, part of practice time throughout the week. Rabinowitz, the dispatch. Yep. Um, you were brought in to install that aggressive defense. You guys had eight pass breakups on Saturday. Was that what you? Was that pretty close to what you wanted to see and, and implement with this defense? Uh, you know, that's always part of it. Uh, at the end of the day. 
um, you want to play well enough to win the game, and, and uh, we, we were able to do that. Disappointed with the total number of yards that they got at the end, but some of the pass breakups specifically in the first half that we were getting, we were playing some pretty tight man-to-man -man with some pressure, and uh, we weren't necessarily getting there with pressure, but we were playing tight with our coverage, and we got some PBUs. Would have liked to have had a couple takeaways uh, in there, and uh, but at the end of the day, disappointed with how we finished the game. But uh, I thought throughout the course of the game, especially in the second and third quarter, we were playing pretty good pass defense. Uh, we're in tight coverage, got our hands on balls, uh, making them throw into tight windows. And that's what we want to be able to do consistently. We just didn't do it for four quarters. Disappointed with the run defense. Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, I'm sure Coach probably hit on it. Uh, we played well enough to win the game, but we didn't play up to Ohio State standard Saturday night. And uh, we're not measuring ourselves you know, uh, on, on what others do. We're measuring ourselves on what we do. And uh, Saturday, we didn't play up to our full potential defensively for four quarters. We had spurts and we had moments that we played well enough there in, in the second and third quarter, like I said. But we have to play better. If we want to win at a, at a high level and, and compete for championships, we have to play great defense. And that's both run defense and pass defense. And um, Saturday night, we didn't, we didn't play well enough as a defense. And we've got to do a better job. How does Minnesota utilize its tight ends, in particular Max Williams at number 88? Well, he, uh, he's a travel. He's a guy that motions around. They put him uh, as a wing a lot of times. He motions around. Uh, he's a lead blocker at the point of attack. He's a guy that, that gets down the field on a lot of play actions, whether it's verticals, wheel routes, to try to get behind the coverage. Uh, he can get uh, matched up on corners. He, he's got a little size advantage on some smaller DBs and goes up and makes some nice plays down the field. But uh, he's a good all-around player, good blocker at the point of attack, like I said, can get down the field and stretch it vertically in the play-action pass game, can go up and jump and, and make some catches in the air on some smaller DBs. So he's a handful. Uh, middle of the second row, Jeff. Uh, Jeff Sabota with uh, Buckeye Sports Bulletin. Uh, Coach Meyer was just in here and talk, said he watches the film and kind of sees how he can see what the buy-in is on the film. He sees how guys support each other, how guys react to things, and he kind of said he was pretty pleased with how that's coming along. Obviously, as a coach, that's what you want, but to actually kind of have it, what does that open up for you, and what does that just really kind of help you do as a coach? Well, if you don't have the buy-in, you don't have the belief in what you're doing and belief in each other, you don't have a, you don't have a, a foundation to, to do anything, to be honest with you. And that's the thing that we do have here. Um, you know, we talk about defensively. We weren't happy with the performance and production on Saturday night, but uh, – it all starts with these kids believe in what we're doing. They've bought into what we're doing. They give great effort. They study the game. Um, and when you have that, you, you have a chance to be successful. And you can get problems corrected when you have that. It's when they don't have belief. They start pointing fingers. They start complaining. Uh, they start blaming others. Then you've got a real issue. And we do not have that on uh, this football team in any phase, offense, defense, or special teams. So it's a, when you have that, it's a special group to coach. Uh, front row middle, Todd. Chris, uh, Todd Porter from the Canton <laughs> Repository. With Minnesota, it's kind of a no frills offense. Like they're going to run, they're going to line up and yeah. run the football at you. Do you guys stress? Do you guys go back to some of the basic fundamentals of forming up and tackling this week and stress that more so in, in practice this week because of the nature of the offense? Well, not necessarily tackling because tackling is such a big emphasis for us uh, to begin with. If you're going to be any good on defense, whether it's pass game or run game, you've got to be good at tackling. And I think so far this year we've been pretty good at our tackling, and that's because of the emphasis that we've put on it. What we really have to get back to is emphasizing the, the fundamentals of, of uh, run fits. Uh, we have to be in the right spot. We've got to be more explosive with our block destruction to be able to get off blocks and make tackles. You know, that's, those are some of the things we did not do a good uh, enough job on Saturday you know, against Michigan State that we've got to do a better job against uh, Minnesota's run game is just fitting the runs the right way, being more violent with our hands, getting off blocks, getting more guys at the point of attack. So if something is wrong, it doesn't turn into a 10, 15-yard gain. It's, you know, it's a three, four, or five-yard gain, and, and uh, you can get them down. That's where we've got to be better. Hi, Chris. Dave Biddle from Bucknuts. Um, which defensive player has improved the most uh, since the beginning of the season? Uh, it, it's probably hard to point out one individual because collectively I think the whole unit has really improved. Uh, some of the younger players have probably made uh, more strides and more improvement just because their ceiling is so high and they started so low. Um, you know, we've already talked about Eli Apple as one individual, but there's been several individuals on the whole team. Um, it, units D-line has improved. Uh, we've got to continue to find some depth. Some of the linebackers improved, DBs. So uh, I don't like to point out any individual because I'll leave somebody out. But there's collectively, there's been a lot of improvement. And again, a long way to go. We're, we're not uh, playing at a championship level right now on defense um, like we, we want to be. But uh, there has been a lot of steady individual improvement. Has there been a unit that's improved the most? Like Coach Meyer talks about offensively, the offensive line has improved the most. Mm -hmm. Is there a unit defensively that's improved the most over the 
the well, two. the two units are probably the, the, the least experienced would be the linebackers and the secondary that have both continued to grow. Um, but, uh, you know, collectively, even the, the, some of the older, uh, more veteran guys up front have uh, shown a lot of improvement. I mean, Joey Bosa from last year or this year has shown a lot of improvement. Michael Bennett continues to, to show improvement. Some of the backup D linemen, uh, Rashad Frazier has shown tons of improvement so far this year. Uh, so at all, all three positions, I think we've had steady improvement. There's not one area that's drastically you know, uh, uh, improved from where we were last spring or last season to where we're at right now. I think there's been steady improvement by all areas. Can, can you tell us what's going on with Armani Reeves and will he play this week? Uh, that I, I, I can't comment on. I, I'm not sure about that. And the last question is about Austin. Austin Ward with ESPN.com. Um, in, the, in the preseason, there was all this talk about Michael Bennett being maybe an All-American, All-Big Ten player. Now those things are usually based on statistics. And he doesn't pile up many of them. What, does, what does he do? What is he doing that would still make him a uh, player of that caliber for your defense? Well, the, the, sometimes for uh, those interior defensive linemen to get statistics, it's kind of hard because they're spending a lot of time getting double teamed. Uh, for him right now, for us, uh, he, he, he does provide uh, double teams inside to make cleaner pictures in the run game for the linebackers. He does uh, get after the quarterback and may not get the sacks, but he's in the face of the quarterback. He's a guy that the offensive line or offensive coordinator from an opponent always has to account for. Uh, and when you put Joey Bosa in there, you know, they've got two guys that they really have to worry about that are explosive players. They have playmaking ability. Uh, they're disruptive. And, and uh, Michael Bennett, it, although he may not have the stats that Joey Bosa has, uh, has done a, an outstanding job for us being disruptive both in the run game and in the pass game so far this year. Would you still put him up there as a all Big Ten performer? From what I've seen from uh, other teams on defense, absolutely. And Bosa, is, did Bosa feel a little frustrated on Saturday night? What did you see out of him, uh, Chris? Because obviously they – Seem to game plan for him pretty well. Well, I, I, to be honest, I don't know if they game plan for him or not. Uh, I'll give their offensive line a lot of credit. Uh, they played a, a very well, a, a very good game Saturday night, both in the run game and in the pass game. They protected the quarterback well, and that's really what they have done a good job of all year. They've only given up five sacks. And uh, we were able to get them one time on Saturday night, but we knew that was going to be a challenge, not necessarily just because of their offensive line, but because of their offensive system. They get rid of the ball quick. Uh, they don't have the quarterback back there holding the ball and allowing pressure to get there very often. So it's a credit to what they do schematically. It's a credit to their offensive line that they were able to control our pass rush throughout the night. Even when we blitzed, uh, we had trouble getting there. Uh, we did force some quicker throws. But uh, you know, Joey was frustrated. I mean, he's a, he's a highly competitive guy that wants to get production, wants to make a difference in a game. And Saturday night, uh, although the stats might not been, have been there like uh, you would expect Joey Bosa to have, but he was still being pretty active, and, and they had to account for him. But I'll give Michigan State a lot of credit. They did a nice job with their offensive line and their, their game planning of getting rid of the ball quick so we couldn't get there.